Hi everyone. This is part two of my message about everyone in your life that you're connected with being the one. So I want to start by recapping part one. Um, I started out kind of venting about the teaching in the spiritual community um, that our journey is all about self. That has always frustrated me. And I started out just kind of venting and offering support to those who don't really resonate with that teaching completely. Then I went on to share a little bit about my personal relationships and so forth. And by the end of part one, I was feeling something higher than myself taking over. And I knew that the message that was coming through was um, of more importance than my little venting session. So um, I get a lot of insight in the shower. So I went ahead and got my shower. And I didn't get any major epiphanies or anything, but I did get a little bit of insight that I do want to share. Um, and that is, I don't completely disagree with that teaching. I just don't think that people who share it or teach it or spread it are really elaborate enough on the meaning. And so that can cause a lot of confusion. Um, what I believe it is, is that we're learning more about who we are. And we're learning to stay true to who we are. So for me, with each relationship or each connection that I've experienced, I've learned the importance a little bit more each time of how to stay true and stay grounded in who I am, who I'm meant to be, and the purpose that I'm meant to fulfill. So that brings me to the last remark that I made in part one when I said um, that I was saying about the connections and how, you know, I was using the garden as an example. And um, the last thing I said was until we perhaps may come back around to that person again. And that's when I realized I was channeling. And it brings me um, also to where I am in my journey at this point in time. So with all my spiritual connections, all my relationships, um, and so forth, and all of my experiences within myself, I've always felt a presence. I've always felt there being something with me. And I've met people along the way who their essence really, really felt like that same essence that I was um, sensing around me. So, when I reconnected with my twin flame, I was able to identify him as a catalyst. I knew that he was someone that I was, that he was very mysterious to me. And very elusive and I knew that I needed to explore that but he always felt polar opposite of me in everything in essence in mission in attitudes the only thing we had in common was that we had similar experiences as children and we were trying to heal from that or deal with that, but we were dealing with it from opposite ends of the spectrum. And we had a lot of um, understanding of each other and we shared a lot of passion, but 
I don't believe that we were meant to actually, and I never really did in my heart, believe that we were meant to actually handle that from the same vantage point, so to speak. So, when I realized that that connection was never going to culminate in, in anything in the physical world, I began to kind of, I don't want to use the word disconnect, but I kind of began to detach my mind from any hope or any expectation of that. And in so doing, I began to feel um, that old, familiar sense of presence seep back in. Now, I realize this is God. I realize this is the all-encompassing, omnipresent source from where we originally um, came. And I realized that regardless of where we go or what we do or who we're with, that presence is always going to be lingering. But this essence that I began to feel after um, letting go of my twin, it was more palpable than I had ever experienced before. It, it was so real for me that I actually began to hypothesize that it was another person who was the culmination of all my connections. I didn't realize that on a conscious level at first, but I began to feel that as time progressed. So, um, going back to what I said in the end of part one, I began to sense that whatever or whoever this presence was was never going to leave me it was never going to part from me and in fact it never had it had only been more subdued during times of my energy being involved with other situations. So I felt this presence seep back in in my time of quiet and reflection and um, at times when I was just kind of erasing my mind of all thought and expectation and anything carnal and just being with myself and being in that state of zero point or avoid or just having a completely empty slate and just being. So in all of my connections throughout my whole life, whether it be someone I'm in relationship with or not, I've always noticed that I could sense an ending. I could sense that there was some thing that needed to be finished or rectified or reconciled with me and that other person. Whether it be between us 
or whether it be together. So together would be soulmates, between us would be karmic, and I can explain that further on a one-on-one -on -one basis, or perhaps I'll do a video about it sometime when I feel guided. But for now, I'm just going to continue with this. So, the presence or essence that I've always sensed with me never felt like there was any ending. It always felt like whatever or whoever this was that I would finally one day be able to identify um, would be ever present, would never be elusive, would never be opposing, would just be, um, if it did turn out to be a person, would be someone who would be like me and have the same mindset and be able to be with me in harmony and share a sense of oneness with me, but at the same time not be so much like me that it would grate on my nerves, who would not mirror the little idiosyncrasies um, that really don't matter. They would be someone who would, it would just be fascinating. It would be like a best friend. It would be like the ideal every relationship, the ideal parent, the ideal sibling, the ideal friend, the ideal lover. It would be like someone who would fit all of those criteria. Now, of course, if it did turn out to be a person, that person wouldn't be perfect. They would have their shortcomings and their flaws and everything else. But those shortcomings and flaws would not affect me, would not impact me, would not strike me as bad or lacking or negative. It would just be a part of who that person is, and I would embrace that. So that's kind of what I sense this person to be. Okay, so another quality they would have would be that they would be, um, they would have staying power. They would be my mainstay. And even though, of course, as humans, we would need space and distance and time, you know, to do our own thing, we would always know and trust and have that sense inside us that this person is not going to leave us. They're not going to abandon us. They're not going to just like go away and never come back. So, um, we all dream of this type of person in our life. And I do believe that is possible. And, I think that with every connection that we have, we get one step closer to that person. What I believe that a lot of people in the spiritual community are teaching is that you have to get that sense of staying within yourself, staying grounded in your own energy and your own power and your own truth in order to be able to maintain that connectedness for such a degree of time that we're able to pull that person in and keep them and hold them without groping at them or trying to hold on to them. So what I've discovered recently, and it's where I was headed toward discussing at the end of part one, was that Instead of all of these connections being or having the purpose of fulfilling some sort of thing and then moving on, this is the energy, the one that we all dream of, that we all fantasize about and we all hope for and believe in 
and trust that will eventually come to us. This is it. This is what we're waiting for. And what the difference is between this person and everyone else in our history is that they do have that staying power, but it's not a constant in your face. I'm with you. I, you know, I'm going to sleep in the same bed with you. I'm going to do all of this stuff with you constantly. It's a weaving in and out. And I'm doing it with my hand, but okay. So it's a weaving of in and out of these people back and forth. So another way to put it is ebb and flow. The ocean doesn't just wash up on the shore and stay there. It ebbs and flows naturally. The same with the moon cycles and the same with us on our individual journey. We're headed towards a place where we're in such a degree of understanding of wholeness that we can't help but polarize this person outside of us. It's like we're so full and so um, complete within ourselves that there's not enough space in us to contain everything that we have. So we pour it into another container. And that container is this person. They're more of you, who you are. And they will be you, a part of you, for all of eternity. So I know that I'm getting to a point where I'm rambling. You might already think that I was. But I know that there will be a select few who will understand this. And, um, and who are very, very much on the cusp, if not already in this connection. So if you would like to discuss this further, um, please feel free to reach out. And um, thank you so much for continuing to follow me along my journey. And I wish you the best along yours. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.